Ted, where's the ball? Where? Well, I thought I'd go live. Hi, everyone. I thought I'd go live because it's now 48 hours since I got home. 48, hey, James. It's 48 hours since I got home from the convention and I'm knackered still. <laughs> but feeling good because I think a good thing a good thing happened on many many levels yeah good morning Doc Michael what time is it with you minus seven must be about 9 a.m. something like that well I I'll show you where I am this is Pomfrey Hill which is a I think it's a lottery funded um, sports venue it's an amazing clubhouse there they do all sorts of things every saturday morning they do a f a fund run and it takes them all the way around the circumference of this playing field 8 a.m you're in california so it's eight hours difference and then uh, we'll walk up here and i'll show you where else they go i just got to get ted to pick up the ball pick up the ball mate go on so a review of the the weekend's events amazing well, let's go back a few days prior. How about the three days that Mark did? Oh, hey, hey, Gary. Yeah, I just want to get a few things off my chest because um, you know you did, you needed you kind of need a debrief after a, a big event like that. I just caught up with Jason for a coffee this lunchtime, but we were more talking about the the tour and what happens next. So um, this walk and talk is more about debrief. From the convention because the tour leading up to it hey ha flat out Fay, good morning and blessings to you too yeah so the tour with with mark on it absolutely awesome so so gutted that paul couldn't make it he had a car hire issue hey how are you doing noble nice to see you on sunday so yeah so many thoughts flooding in from the weekend's events as if I can get out the sun, I might be able to see what's going on. But let's go back to the tour midweek in Dublin and Belfast and Cardiff with Mark. I think he did an awesome job. I think he won, won over loads of people and uh, did himself massive favours by getting his hands dirty and um, getting involved, getting stuck in and towing away the uh, the kit back in Dublin, back to the van. And I want to say something as well, which Mark will never mention, but I will. And that is when the convention finished, there were a good 120 seats to, t to clear up. And I didn't know we had to put them away. It was one of these venues where you have to kind of self-service. So I was just about to leave thinking I'd finished, said to the, uh, said to the member of staff in the office, we're done now, just the chairs. I hope that's okay to leave them out. And she looked at me horrified to say, no, you've got to tidy them up. <laughs> so I had 120 chairs, 130 chairs. It was me, Dave, and guess what? Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent helped put all the chairs away without complaining, just, just mucked in, because I was taking him back. And my good friend, Rich from Weston, picked him up from my house and treated him to some sushi because his wife's Japanese. She's an air hostess, so thank you, Rich. Thank your lovely wife for that. And uh, yeah, just, just going back to the Dublin, the Belfast and the Cardiff, didn't Mark do well? And didn't it create a bit of a buzz in Cardiff when Martin Leaker and, and Dave Mannell turned up? So lovely to see, you know, the guys who, well, we know, we know Dave does activism, we know Martin does activism, but it's not their primary thing. Yeah, I didn't know, yeah. So it's great to see, and James, we want to thank you too for picking up Mark from Birmingham Airport. And thank you so much also for producing a little show reel on your channel of Jason's efforts and all the activist efforts so far. It's much appreciated. It's really, really nice. And Mark says you're a top guy. So thank you very much for that. And Ted's found some fox whatever to roll in. That'd be nice. So I just want to 
just thank everyone for for all their help you know there was charlotte who was my right hand lady just signing everyone in and arranging all the menus for everyone and answering all their questions couldn't have done it without her for sure and all my helpers so and all the others that contributed so adam from iron realm media thank you mate you did a great job with all your film footage and uh you know it's pre pretty dedicated to sit there filming throughout and you know the, the quality from a from a phone and a microphone is pretty good so thank you for that and thanks to all those that helped you know doing other things so charlotte's other half dave thank you thank you for doing filming and thank you everyone um who helped just so lisa who helped um steward and various other people who just helped in many many ways putting flyers out and just help tidy things up for me. So really, really appreciate it. It was a good, good effort, good team effort. But how do I feel about the whole event? Well, some key moments for me. I think on the Saturday, it was really nice to see a, a varied, a varied amount of uh, content from different people. So we had the press there. We had the Sun newspaper and a couple of other journalists there. A couple of media companies and documentary filmmakers so it was nice to be able to give them a cross-section of content yeah thanks oh thanks Gary that's very kind um, basically it was lovely to see um, Paul on the plane give such a great forensic dissection of NASA's chicanery with their images and then you had Anthony Riley take on the education system but doing it in a really educated way you know how you'd expect it to be done showing the education out of being partisan but also using legal precedent to do so and his his degree as you know was specializing in showing the controversy of the education act which i thought was great it's it's highly highly good and dr john d was in the audience for those that didn't know and he told me he really really enjoyed it um we also had a phd in physics we also had a hey Dave anyone else streaming from the tour um, whilst on the tour or at the event because I think Adam's Iron Realm Media is probably the best quality we went round with a video camera and I've got a load of content to take off the camera so there'll be some backstage things and some in, out on the social content to to produce and then finally Martin Leaker's presentation about the way the sun and the moon might be moving in a sort of perpetual electromagnetic motor with a push-pull effect from what he can see encoded in all the architecture going back through the centuries with the Earth's four corners being kind of positive, negative, well, kind of electromagnetic, uh, po uh, I guess you might call them poles, but things that do the push and the pull to cause the circular motion through the sun and the moon it was mind-blowing and I'm telling you now there were people who sat in their chairs afterwards to they were just they were sat there mind blown I, I said to you how, how did you rate Martin she said I'm mind blown I'm still here you know sitting in awe of what I've heard so congratulations Martin it was a brilliant presentation and uh, despite the fact when I said 60 minutes left, you thought I said 16, <laughs> so apologies. You then, uh, you then rattled through lots of different slides, which you probably felt a bit disappointed that you had to do that. But in actual fact, you left more time for Q&A and I think the Q&A was the valuable part. Thanks, Coffee Paul, you came, didn't you? Hey, Rob, nice to see you at the toroidal vortex. Yeah, absolutely. I I really enjoyed Martin's presentation because as a roundup of four decks to show people his was the more ethereal one but he brings that ethereal view back down to earth and you can see it potentially being our reality so much like Cami does this in amazing form because she's so creative she's so right brain 
the same the same goes for Martin. You know, he's so out there sometimes, but he's he's rooting his ideas in some of the architectural evidence, which goes to show, as Mark would say, we, we're not the first people to rent this apartment. Perhaps a previous iteration knew about all this, how to take energy from the atmosphere, from the ether, and knew that the sun and the moon were powered by the four corners of the earth, and they were called the angels. And the angels were encoded in many, many sigils and many, many um, architectural ornamental pieces that you think, that's pretty, it's symmetrical. But when you look at like a hundred examples back to back, right across the plain, you can see the Phoenicians definitely knew how this place worked. So mind blowing presentation and left us on a high to go out to the golf club and you know, Mark Devon did a good job with his music and everyone was relaxing and we had the harvest moon setting in front of the golf club and, and you can imagine the sun setting when you're on the 18th hole you're in the clubhouse looking out over the 18th it was a stunning scenario really nice and warm sun setting music playing everyone's having a blast you know people are socializing with all the speakers we had uh, chris uk come down and he showed me some stuff on paper which he and harry are working on as a video you're going to be impressed with that too there's another physical dynamics thing that uh, Chris is putting together, which I think will be really exciting. It was nice to see the whole British crew. Yeah, um, already smashed the like, tight. thank you. Hey AJM, nice to join, thanks for joining. David Scriven, hey, how you doing? Sven, good afternoon my friend, it was a fab weekend. Shame you missed the Sunday, very grateful to yourself and Charlotte, can't wait to meet you both. Thank you very much Sven, yeah it was, it was an awesome weekend just for all those things that I'm trying to list now. So then you had Dave Marsh watching the sun go, uh, the, the, the moon, the moon, the harvest moon, which was massive, a really golden orangey moon. Where's Ted gone? There he is. In this wonderful setting at the golf club whilst people are sipping their drinks. It was, it was magical watching Dolly and Roxanne buzzing around and um, Martin and Mel have a good time. Little did I know Mel was responsible for the great British mortgage swindle video, which I can comment on another time, but I remember giving them support on one of our podcasts, so that was nice. And um, moving on to the Sunday, two members of staff from the canteen it came out to say yeah oh sorry let's let's keep going with the saturday seeing all the brit lads there so nathan oakley and ranty came which is great chris uk came and uh, it was lovely to see them just as a group you know we don't we don't often get together like that um and to have the opportunity to mingle with mark and paul from america was top draw it's really really nice so moving on to Sunday, I can't, uh, let's try and remember. So yeah, there were two members of staff in the canteen. There was a chef and his assistant who must have had to be brave to do this, but came up to me and Mark and said, uh, can we come and watch Mark when he's doing his presentation? I think his, his was 11 o'clock. And of course we said yes. <laughs> you imagine you have to kind of come out to all your team members and all the staff members there because the, they were all trying to keep a straight face and I'm sure they were all getting flat smucked to left right and center but two of the chefs out of a team of about 15 across the piece you know out front of house and out and about it's quite a high representation so I found that amazing um, so they asked to come in and they came in at the beginning and we gave them a, a round of applause, not just for the food, but for coming in and seeing Mark present. So we had Dave Murphy first. He did a great job of, again, setting foundations for those that were new in on the Sunday, but also showing how um, we can be wrong. You know, we can be fooled quite easily. And then with Mark, his presentation was more about um, 
the momentum that Flat Earth has and his a few slides on the coelacanth, which was, um, yeah, the food was pretty good to be honest. For the budget price we were offering it at, <laughs> it wasn't bad at all. The chef to pop in, flat smacked a few of the girls. Did he? Oh, brilliant. Well, all of this creates momentum, you know. I remember phoning the, the, the venue on Monday just to say thank you to everyone. And I mentioned that they, uh, they, that two chefs asked to come in and they said, that's great participation in the event. So I should imagine that whole, that whole center now will have a few ripple effects, you know, a few, few converts coming out of the kitchen. And, um, yeah, Hunter's chicken wasn't bad at all. <laughs> and, uh, so Sunday finished with, um, with Dave, Dave Marsh doing his a globe lie, the moon, the moon, what was it? Shoot the moon, a globe lie perspective, I think it was called. And again, he mixed, he mixed some real life stuff, some of his activism and work with um, Dr. John D with some moon observation stuff. And it was pretty amazing, some of the things he was talking about. But really, I think the, the major benefit from doing events like this is it does raise the bar in terms of what you can expect from each other. You know, the energy that you get, the expectations quite high. You walk away thinking, I can do some of this myself. And oh, don't ask that quite so soon, James. I'm still knackered. I'm still absolutely mullered. Um, yeah, so you know, it gets people thinking. Can I work? Can I work with others? It gets people encouraged. The activism itself has got momentum, hasn't it? And it makes a difference. And then you can find out who's doing work in amongst you. Now, in that audience, we had another PhD physician, and he was on the flat side, so well chuffed with him. Yeah, and you know, we even. <laughs> We had the Sun newspaper come and two guys that spent loads of time with us on the Saturday night and had drinks. Now they had their own media company, so I don't know where they're going with this, uh, but they were super excited. And I, and I think by the time we'd finished with them, their minds were pretty blown. So I'm excited about what they could come up with. Oh, well done. Yeah, that's awesome, James. I mean, there's a testimony right there. If you get the courage to start, because activism's not for everyone. I mean, J Jason and I have both done sales for years, so we're kind of used to rejection. It doesn't, it's water for ducks back with us. And it's, it's easier to handle a Globus rejection than it is a flat earthers reje rejection. And you get that more than anything. <laughs> yeah, Karl Marx does the washing up. Yeah, so, you know, Mark tidies up the chairs as well, fair play to him. And, um, yeah, the Sun newspaper, let me give you my two penneth. So the Sun newspaper, when you read it, you see, first of all, you see the, on the online version, you see the Netflix trailer. Now, Netflix, hey, Chris UK, I gave you a mention earlier, mate. Looking forward to your video from Harry. So thanks for sharing that idea. It sounded really good. Now, I was just gonna say about the Sun newspaper, the Sun, the Sun newspaper online version did not mention Flat Earth Society. Kind of makes the newspaper version with that on the top kind of makes you a bit angry. But don't forget, this is not you reading it. This is the Sun's readership reading it. So however you feel about it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's how you think they're going to react as a newbie. And let's face it, you won't get any PhDs reading the Sun, will you? So it doesn't have to be super accurate. Here's what I think will happen. You're gonna get photo, the, the first, on, on the online version, you get the Netflix tra trailer, which mentions it's exponentially growing. There's millions of people getting into it. Then you see the huge convention in the States and it, it should pique your curiosity. Now, Mark had a group of um, classmates and their teacher knock on his house last week or the week before asking questions because they'd seen behind the curb. So although it enrages us, it doesn't enrage everyone else. And Mark also said, oh, I'm glad to hear it, mate. 
I'm glad to hear it, Chris. Um, what I would think is that the the method of getting into someone's head is not to come in with the complete flat earth as perfect presentation. It's actually to go in, to kind of taking a piss of it with them. So you give them permission to kind of start by taking the piss, but then they'll look at the, the content and see the NASA copy and paste Robert Simmons image. And then they'll see a picture of Carl Frock, wouldn't they? And Freddie Flintoff. And these guys ain't stupid. They didn't get to the, who's, uh, what, what's the game show with Freddie on? They don't get to Five Live for being an idiot and not having any kudos. You know, this is a captain of England cricket team. He's, he's a legend who's won the ashes. He's hard as nails and gone in as, as a boxer. He's also, you know, been on, uh, it's not a question of sport, is it? It's the one with um, Jamie Redknapp, that one. He's been on there for ages and he's always been pretty savvy on that. So for him, for him, league of their own, that's right, cheers. So for him to declare he's open to it and for Carl Frock to say, I'm on board, will make millions of people look. It's a bit like the Kyrie Irving effect where all of Kyrie's um, fans started challenging their teachers and Kyrie had to apologise because the kids were starting to challenge the teacher. Kyrie says the earth's flat, what, what, what have you got to say about it? In the same way, Carl Frock fans and Freddie Flintoff fans will be thinking, why on earth would Freddie be into this? And then you then you look at the, the panel which has the claims and the counterclaims and there's nothing wrong with putting the globe as point of view. I know it says expert, but people who people who are seeing this thing for the first time will, will read both and probably make up their own minds. And then you've got Anthony's testimony, my testimony, Roxanne's testimony, and Ruben's picture model and to be fair those pictures and photos are pretty good they're not the googly-eyed ones you normally expect where they catch you unawares looking a bit goofy I think they look fine so from my perspective I can see people getting triggered all over the place on Facebook and it just it makes me chuckle really because they're showing no discernment about the readership the readership are not particularly educated, they're not PhD physicians, they don't know all the arguments. Did you know all the arguments on day one? I bet you didn't. Did you know how to defend the globe model or the flat earth model on day one? I bet you didn't. What you, what you heard was one little nugget that made you go, what? And I think that Sun article actually achieves that, whether you believe it or not, or whether the negheads believe it or not. And again, Mark, Mark offered his view on it and said, look, if you go in with a completely positive tilt on these things, people just gloss past it and they see it as biased. So if you go in taking the mickey slightly, which that journalist did, Grant Collinson, I think his name is, he, um, he gives you permission to take the mickey for the first few minutes. Hey, Karen, my battery's going to go, uh, go in about five minutes, I think. So I think he gives you permission. The article is kind of biased enough, but not so biased it's, it's ridiculous. But biased enough to make it go, yeah, let's take the mickey out of this thing. And let's, um, here's the dog, let's take the mickey out of this thing. But you got enough Trojan horse images and comments in there for the truly conscious in there who want to have a look at it or, you know, might be curious to actually go and have a look. Uh, much like the Australian advert, Mark told you about this, it's like, yeah, and you Mark, uh, Rob, take care mate, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, you need, you need, you need that slightly negative uh, approach for people to feel not too silly looking at it, otherwise it's just too much. So, you know, I love the, what Shelley Lewis is doing with the, with the Plain Truth documentary, but I do fear because it will be so perfect, whether your cynic will actually look at it. Um, so it might be the perfect recruitment tool for us, because we know we're looking for a you know a credi credible, high quality, pat full of truth and perfect perfection. I think Shelley will deliver that in spades. But to your unsuspecting Sun newspaper reader, they're not 
they're not looking for that. They're not looking for perfection. And we've got to get out of this. We've got to get out of this um, tendency to want perfection in media because it's just not realistic. And like Mark said, and I agree with him, you, you kind of need, you need the Trojan horse effect. You, know, you need to give someone permission to get over that initial embarrassment. You know, the yeah, stupid, isn't it? Yeah. And then you see the fake uh, NASA photo and you think, hmm, that's got me thinking now. I'll take a further look at this. And who do they look up? Mark Sargent. They only need to click play on the first video that they see. And they'll either see him doing an interview, which he handles pretty well every time, or they'll click on the clues or something similar. And that's a pretty good intro. And as Mark would say, he's the freshman recruiter. He, he says, I don't care if you hate my work, go and find another channel that you do like. Mark's kind of brilliant at being the first person that you meet when you come through the door. And he's brilliant. He'll show you around, show you what's good, get you started, a few basic principles, and then he sets you on your way and you probably never see him again. Might come around the next uh, convention or something, but you tend to move on, don't you? You mature, you get onto Globebusters, you get onto other content that, that floats your boat. So, as a weekend goes, I was really pleased with it. I was absolutely knackered from it but very, very rewarding in the end. And I, and I think, and I hope, from the feedback that I got, that everyone did enjoy it and got lots from it. So I just want to thank all the delegates that came. Thanks, Gary, for your encouragement too. And if you're on the fence about going to Amsterdam, you need to go, you need to click buy that ticket. And don't leave it too late. I had people turn up like on the day with cash. It's such a headache. It's it it's such a headache to handle a ticket last minute like that. But we did, and it's okay. We'll get over it. It's not. <laughs> shout out to Globebusters. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. But do the organisers a favour and book online and just get it done in advance so that you're not giving them a headache. A couple of anecdotes. I had two people turn up with dogs in the car. And in the car park and the venue notice and they said we can't have a dog on site i'm really sorry so i had to send them send them with their dog home so yeah um i just want to thank everyone who came and gave us support um i'll probably miss loads of people off uh, everyone was great in the audience gave us loads of participation when we did q a for for everyone particularly you know mark's lasted a good 25 minutes i think martin's lasted 25 minutes and um you know it was just epic you know and lisa's poetry at the end she's amazing go to the real hat fits channel look at her she's published about four with a video kind of backdrop as well and they're just amazing poems and we finished with Lisa's poem. So the sun is shining. It was a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, let me just read a few comments before my battery dies. Hold on one second. Live chat. Come back. Yeah, come to Amsterdam. Thank you, James. That's really kind. So get yourself off to Amsterdam. Help Gary and Didi fill up that place. Yes, Voyage Horizontal, the grit in the oyster makes the pearl. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of people read the scum. So we should get some flat earthers from there. Yeah, I, I no doubt we will. Yeah, I, the, the FE Society references in the paper version, isn't it? Which is a shame. But the thing is, you don't you don't go straight there, do you? You read the article. Oh, Ted's run off. He's found a squirrel all the way over there. You read the article, don't you? You see the content. You look at the pictures. I think predominantly they'll look at the pictures. They'll look at Ruben's model. They'll look at Carl Frog, and they'll look at Freddie Flintoff first. I reckon, and maybe Mark holding up his models. They'll look at that and go, "What? There's loads of people who think this." And then hopefully they'll they'll get a reference point where they can go and research it and they don't go straight to YouTube and punch it in. They might actually go and look up Mark Sargent, hopefully. That's that's the that's the hope. So um at the end of this live stream I just want to thank you for tuning in. Sending out big hugs, peace and love to everyone. 
it's been an absolute pleasure doing this conference even friday night even though it was stressful i knew it would still be a good a good a good event so uh, thanks to all the speakers for making it so special and to roxanne and jason for their support to james for the lifts and everyone else who mucked in i really appreciate appreciate you all so sending you peace and love thanks for tuning in thanks for your comments and we'll see you again soon